something for us tonight. Um, there's a selection of merchandise here on the round table in the center uh, that I found personally inspiring. And if you want to look through it or see if there's something else in the store to inspire, be inspired by, I totally wholeheartedly recommend that. Also on the back table, we have um, a mannequin with magnetic poetry on it. Anyone is welcome to play around with the letters that are there and make a poem. Share it to your Instagram if you want, take a picture of it, whatever. Uh, it's lots of fun, actually, even though I don't make it sound like it. <laughs> There's also coloring pages that have space on them to write a poem of your own to go with them or just keep yourself occupied. There's also pages back there that are excerpts from Disconnected, which is a collection of short stories and poetry by various authors, and a excerpt from Welcome to the Monkey House by Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, both are incredible pieces if anyone wants to try blackout poetry, which is essentially taking um, words that somebody else has written, finding ones that you resonate with, and blacking everything else out. Also really fun if you're not sure what you want to do. There's also a poetry book that was released in 2016 by the author Atticus over there that's available for anybody to flip through. It does have personal annotations, so take those with a grain of salt if you want. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then we also have an E.E. E. Cummings book, which is a little bit more towards the classic side of poetry, um, yet the rule breaking to it, not capitalizing um, I when it's used, capitalizing random words, uh, not really understanding the importance of sentence structure, but also making it an enjoyable poem nonetheless. There's also a prompt journal back there from the author Ian S. Thomas, who is a poet that has a blog called I Wrote This For You dot me. And it's all just kind of random excerpts to a loved one, but they resonate with anybody who reads them usually. Uh, so there's that if anybody wants to take a prompt and try to write something tonight or otherwise. Um, and if anybody wants to sign up to read, the sign up sheet is here in front of me. Um, I think I've gone over all the inspiring things and fun things to try out tonight. And uh, to start us off tonight, I want to read a poem. Well, it's a part two poem, but the first one is titled, There is Wisdom in Strife, and it was written by a friend of mine. And um, A, they asked me to read it, but also it's been one of my favorite poems uh, since I really got into understanding what poetry was about, so I want to share that. There is wisdom in strife. Anarchy, beloved, teach me to fish in Hades. I want your embrace like I want to be understood by those who do not have the power to understand. Temptation bathed in your love as my bait. I am unsure of what might bite, but I hope to death I catch a glimpse at the end. The air is electric. My nerves are aware of something gruesomely eclectic. Humanity stands between this world and Hades but we know not what it means, for we are obscene. Guide me through the falter of flame and fear, dear anarchy. The signs above have worn away. In their blank stoicism, they port, point towards the man in the mirror, adorned with fine lines of modern cynicism that have been stitched with corruption and the greedy hands of charity. The cynical belief of sacred life will cast this bait into the sea, and I only wish that I could see just what will happen to me. And if I can't swear, oh dear anarchy, I will flee. But promise me that you will not blame the sea. Disagree with me, anarchy. Teach me to fish in Hades, please, dear anarchy. Does a river flow or does it run away? Is it forced or does it like it this way? If you asked it, would it want to stay? For the answer, if the truth be betrayed. Humors faint, the scorned, and murmur slyly. Truth is a ghost, and she's winking shyly. Life's a story the world knows and applauds, and a man in love will use it for frauds. Running out of breath to catch, I've come to know some little pieces of myself and the world I see, but it's out of focus, resolutely. I've tried to taste enlightenment. All I gained was a friend in failure. She's sweet to me, she does not lie. She never sleeps and always sighs. Now remember, dear Anarchy, you must teach something to me.
And part of the reason I chose that poem was because I wrote a poem um, half inspired by that and half inspired by the myths of Persephone um, in the Greek myths. And it ended up winning a bunch of contests and being published in places that I could have never hoped for. So I owe a lot of thanks to this friend. And uh, the second poem is actually the contest winning one inspired by that. It's titled, uh, Back to the Beginning. Dearest Anarchy, beloved soul that you are, teach me to fish in Hades. Remind me of a lie covered truths and broken hearted songs that bite. Let me tell you that I crave your voice the way I long to hate the ones who know no other way than hate. Oh, Anarchy, you intrinsic soul, take me through the fire, show me what darkness really is, and teach me to fish in Hades, for it seems there is no other way. He searched for enlightenment, obsessing over this cosmic refreshment, only to find a girl who cannot lie, does not sleep, and always sighs. I know I, I mean she, wasn't his goal at all, so anarchy, dear anarchy, teach me how to fall for something, someone, anything, anyone other than his love to replace my dying son. Thank you. Did anyone else want to come up yet? It looks like Rudy has signed up. It's one of my adventures while traveling. Some years ago in Montreal, I was accosted by a stranger. Friend, he said, although I didn't know him. Friend, he said, I'm down on my luck, and can you spot me a buck? That was in 56, when a buck was still a buck and gas was 18 cents a gallon, imperial gallon. And my lunch that day was 75 cents with refills on the coffee. I could get five loaves of bread for a buck, cigarettes were 17 cents a pack, and my ride home on the bus that day cost me all of two bits, Canadian. But still, I gave him the money. He took the dough and mumbled thanks and shuffled off into the night. I'll pay you back with the last words I heard. Here it is, it's been 50 years. The loan is still not repaid. I should have known, I was a fool. I think my money is gone. There is no moral to this story. Sometimes a loan is simply a gift. Yes. Did you expect more? <laughs> I don't know what they had. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is Tara. My favorite shopkeeper. So, uh, do you want to hear one more while I'm here? Sure. Yes. Who has ever heard that song, The Strawberry Ramon? Sounds familiar. Old timers would know that okay. one. <clears throat> Goes like this. I was hanging around, not earning a dime. Out of a jump, you know. But anyhow, the poem goes like this. I was hanging around town, not earning a dime. When art came to mind that I really could mine, I got me a canvas, a brush and some paint, and started to work like a heavenly saint. 
I put in some posies and marigolds too. Then came two kids that I had once knew. They looked real cute and were skipping a rope. When I suddenly knew I can sell this fine art to any old dope. I took a large check and headed for town. I was really laughing about that stupid old clown. I'm now at a gallery and what do I see? My very old painting for a very large fee. I just didn't think I could get that huge price. Cutesy still sells. Isn't that really nice? <laughs> Okay, what else? You want more? Is there anybody else wants to do something? Mm -hmm. TJ has to, well, if he wants to practice his poem because he has to. Huh? Okay. TJ has his poem. He has what to sign up though. Oh. He, okay. he skipped an important step. Listen, I can keep okay. go, uh, going for like the next three hours or so. <laughs> I'm a frustrated artist. I do watercolors and acrylics sometimes oils. So this is what happened one day. A well-dressed lady entered my shop. I knew right away something was up. She walked around, looked at my art. She was quite insulting. That much is true. She said to me, listen, you crazy old fool. You call this junk art? You wrinkled old hack. Your colors are poor. Not a line here is straight. Do you really want to sell this and also get paid? Go back to school and learn more about it. I replied in a very shaky voice, dear lady, take another look around. I think what you like can easily be found. She looked at me with a vicious smile. I have my eyes on that one. It's abstract in style. Her bony old finger pointed at my best piece of work, and then she added, I really don't need it, and it doesn't fit my decor. I suddenly knew what she really wanted. The price should come down. She probably thought I was a senile old clown. Turns out she was right. I give 10% off. But I did sell that piece, and that sure saved my price. <laughs> You got one, Tara? All mine are old ones from bars and I used to be in college and they're dirty. What were you doing in college? Getting my degrees. Hey, where's my tea? You need a tea? No, the lady said she would bring it. I'm sitting at a railroad station trying to sell my art to the entire nation. People rush by and don't give it a glance. I try the downtown bus depot next, where people are more discerning and give art a chance. What do you think of that one? I like it. You didn't even listen. They give art a chance, they're more discerning. Oh, okay. Okay. I import authentic paintings from China. I have Matisse, Cezanne, and Picasso. I also feature Rembrandt, Delacroix, and Rubens. Those are the real thing. But if you buy them, you gotta take at least 10. You understand the irony of it? Okay. <laughs> Modern art is famous all over the world, but around here, modern is a dirty word. What do you think? Is there anyone else? What have you got against me? I asked the old grouch. 
All I want is to sit here and do my art. It's okay by me, the reply was, but not in my living room and not on my couch. Anybody else? Kevin, you got one? Not this week. Come on here, man. Oh, it's you. Yes. You got something good again? Yes. Okay. I love it. Go ahead, DJ. Does your mother know about you? Yes. And the stuff that you're doing? I'm right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a 15 minutes. 